Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Make It. This is episode, I believe, 54 already. How fast time flies. And tonight we're Bobless. Last week, if you were watching the show, you remember Bob saying that he wasn't going to be available this week, more than likely. And I haven't heard from him, so I'm going to guess he's not. But I have some stuff planned for this week. Uh, one of them is a viewer request that I've had for a while. And I've actually had something in my hands to answer it but has some difficulties. We're going to cover all that stuff on the show uh, here tonight. So if you are watching us live, which you, if you are right now, you're having, you're having audio issues. So you probably aren't going to watch live for very long, but uh, we normally come here every Monday night, meet up at 9 PM Eastern and we go through a couple projects. We try to do two projects a week. And so far it's been pretty focused on the Arduino with a few little things from Raspberry Pi. I've been playing with some BeagleBone stuff here recently and a new do, and that stuff's coming up in future shows here very quickly as I, as I learn to play this stuff. So tonight I kind of want to jump back last week, actually two weeks ago, I started this and started showing you some of the LEDs that are programmable and for as far as the RGB colors and stuff like that goes. And last week I showed you a big panel, the very bright big panel uh, that we have. And this week I have something that's even a little bit more different, a little, I don't want to say different or that sounds funny, but it's, it's something that's, you know, kind of cool as well. Um, I'm going to show you it to you first before I jump into tonight and explain this tonight's show. But let's hop over here and what we see is we see these a strip of those same LEDs. So you see the LEDs in there. These are all individually addressable and changing colors. Um, and actually, I'm going to reset it and it'll make it a little bit more obvious that they're all individually addressed. So if you watch, you see the strip is lighting up and you can kind of see this. It's kind of off camera a little bit. But you're going to see the color change here in a second and you're going to see the each one's individually addressable. So it's actually running the exact same program I ran last week on the big panel. So it's actually running it was as it thinks it is a 16 by 16 panel and it's doing all these neat things and you're going to see here in a second it's going to go to rainbow and you'll see the rainbow kind of walk and the camera doesn't like the bright lights obviously you see it's fuzzing out because of it's so bright let's see if i can get my hand here and get it to focus on it but you see they're all individually addressable the thing about this is this is encased in this plastic rubber waterproof stuff um, it's the only way I could find it. I couldn't find it as individual strips like you can the individual colors. I'm sure it's out there. I just couldn't find it um, from my sites that I normally go to. But this is a a covering on it. It's supposed to be weatherproof, so you can stick it outside. So you could stick this anywhere and do some really cool things with it, whether you do it for Christmas or for decoration or some kind of signage or anything like that. It's, you know, these are very bright. Uh, you can you can't really tell from the camera other than it's you know dimming itself down. But these are all turned sideways, and you can see how bright they are. And have the ones in my hand that are facing up, you know. So they're as bright as the other ones that we had last week on that big white panel, just they're in individual strips. So you can run this around a stage or around a pole or across the ceiling or underneath maybe some kind of uh, furniture, the light of the furniture up and do different things with it. You can, the ideas are endless. So you see it's running the same thing. Here's red and, red and blue we saw last week. Um, it's running all the different patterns that we ran on the big panel, but it's running it in the strip. So for every 16 of these, basically, it's considered a line on that panel. So you're going to see it run the same patterns that we saw last week. But I want to show it to you because these things are really fun to play with. Um, and I have them in so many different ways now. I got them in the strip. I got them in my shields. And I got them in that big white panel. So uh, they're just very fun to play with. So uh, I just want to show that to you this week before we get into our, our main subject. And I got to clean up the, uh, the area here before we get too far into the main subject. So I'll take a, a quick break. Uh, while I do that and um, but before we go to the break uh, if you we mentioned this to you before we have an Amazon link and if you go to the, the Texan TV webpage there's a link to Amazon and if you drag that graphic up to your uh, bar at the top it should take you to Amazon and you can bookmark that and people have been bookmarking that and buying things to Amazon and it's so helpful to us because things like this strip that I got you know it doesn't cost a lot of money but you start buying all these little things it adds up and every little bit we get the help you know, to get the new products or we have the Beagle Bones or whatever we're playing with, it's just helpful to help offset that cost a little bit. Because right now it's pretty much coming out of our pocket, including running the servers that run the show and all the equipment and everything we do. So anything we get as far as a little residual from you buying a product uh, through Amazon is helpful to us. And it doesn't cost you anything. It just And it's not really a lot. It's only like 3 or 4% uh, that comes to us. So it's, you know, generally... 10, 20 cents, but you know, a couple hundred people do that. It adds up and gives us, you know, 20, 30 bucks 
every every year so often uh, to go out and get some new stuff to play with. So that's very helpful. Uh, also, if you are not watching us live and you're watching us on download, uh, it's always appreciate if you go out to like iTunes or wherever you're getting it from, whether you're on an Android and getting it from Dogcatcher or any of the any of the podcast directories. We should be in all of them. If you find somewhere that we're not, please let us know. We'll make sure that we get there. But in almost every podcast director, there's a way you can rate the shows. And it's helpful to us if you rate the shows because we get found easier. And this is particularly if you're watching it on something that comes from iTunes, whether you're watching it from iTunes on your computer or on your iPad or your iPhone, that helps us to get found if you come out and give us a rating. If we have no ratings, we won't even show up on the list hardly. And it's just helpful to get lots of people to go out there and give us ratings. So we appreciate uh, that. But what we appreciate even more is telling your friends. I mean, so many people that do this have friends that do the same similar things. Spread the word around. That just helps us get the word out. And it's it's amazing. The Texan TV website is growing by leaps and bounds. Every day it seems like we get more and more people. And if you look at it in, in uh, Google Analytics, you see that the line just keeps going up and up and up and up as, the, as time goes by. So that's great. Uh, it's also very positive to see how many downloads we're getting. Uh, we're getting lots and lots of downloads and lots of emails. And we're trying to keep up with the emails. Uh, it gets it gets hard, but we are definitely trying. The other thing is we have a Google Plus community, and it's actually been getting a little bit busier. Um, I'm going to say it was a very slow start, but we have some people out there that are posting in it, and we try to reply to that you know as quick as we can. Uh, throughout doing other things, I'll hop in there and check see what's in there and and reply back and communicate. But if you're in, if you want to talk to the people, or you have questions, uh, or just want to talk geek, I mean that's what the whole the whole environment is for. Just go out to the community out there on text and TV and click on community. It's actually a Google plus community. So it interacts with um, everybody else that's in the, in the community. If you're not a member of the community, go join. It does require a Gmail account, but you know, they're free. So if you don't have a Gmail account, go, so sign, go sign up for one and get a Google plus account. Uh, it comes with the Gmail account and you can go out there and you can respond. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a quick break. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to unplug this flashy thing that's in the corner of my face, uh, or corner of my eye over here. And uh, I'm going to set up this, which is a touchscreen controller. And I'm going to get the camera set up so we can see it. So we had a question about using touchscreens and how do they work with Arduino. Well, it's not as easy as you would think, uh, considering how open the Arduino is. I actually found this board. And I'm going to talk about the problems that I have with this board and how I finally figured out how to get to work because it wasn't as simple as you would think it would have been, considering it comes in a shield for an Arduino. But uh, I did get it to work, and I'm going to give you the links, and I don't know the guy's actual name who I got the information from. His website doesn't have his name anywhere on it. So um, I'm going to thank him by pointing it to his website. We'll talk about all that stuff when we get back and all the issues that I, that I had with that. So we'll be back right after this. You work hard for your business. Your website should too. No matter what industry you're in, select your customizable high quality design with professionally written content and graphic elements created for your business. Make changes online whenever you like. Switch your background color, page layout, and text anytime. Add your pictures and logo. Upgrade your website with useful one in one web apps and integrate social media. Upload your photo albums and embed videos. With one click, optimize your website for viewing on mobile devices. Choose your free domain or you can easily transfer an existing one. Thanks to one in ones SEO tools, customers can find you everywhere. one in one My Website, a professional website created by you. When you open up an Audible audiobook, it opens up your imagination. Enjoy a steamy romance while ironing the sheets. Discover an historic battle while battling the bulge at the gym. Visit audible.com slash free books now to try two books absolutely free. Get caught up in a whodunit during a do-it-yourself project. Listen anytime, anywhere with the Audible mobile app. When you're out for a walk, learn how to climb the corporate ladder or bring a little magic to your minivan with a fantasy novel. With over 100,000 titles, Audible is an amazing experience that you can now try absolutely free. And just like our books, there's no binding. Our great listen guarantee lets you exchange a title you don't like for another, no questions asked. 
Visit audible.com slash free books to download two books of your choice right now. Right. We want to thank our sponsors. They are our awesome sponsors. And uh, if you are an Audible person, Audible is incredible. I download a couple of books a month, listen to it as I drive around. So definitely go check out Audible and get your free book by going to the link there. All right. So before the break, I mentioned that I uh, was going to talk about some touchscreen stuff. So let's go back here and let's look at it real quick. So this is the touchscreen um, shield. And it's actually fairly cheaply made. Uh, the screen isn't really attached. It's it has uh, it's kind of laying on there. So if you hear it bounce around, that's what it is. Um, but I got this, I don't even know where I got it from, but the name was on the back. The company, if you go to the, the website link or you go look for it, uh, it doesn't exist. So I don't know if the company never existed and they were planning on come starting up or, what, or whatever. So I did lots of searching through the internet and it's taken me a long time. I keep going back to it every once in a while because I keep getting the question about the touchscreen. So what this basically is is a 2.2 inch uh, LCD and it has a touchscreen on it. And I'm running one program right now and I'm going to walk through these programs, but I'm going to tell you up front, I didn't write these programs. These actually came from Adafruit and um, also from the guy who um, got us to work he, through the Adafruit library. He basically modified an Adafruit library. And it's something that I finally found after many, many hours of searching for details. I basically was giving up on this shield and go look, look for another one or get some details on how to make my own. Although what I found is making your own is very, very complicated. It's nowhere near as simple as other things because the LCD itself is very difficult to program. So there's a lot of other pieces that, that are moving pieces. The touchscreen itself is actually pretty simple because it's pretty much just X, Y, and there's chips that do all that stuff for you and feed it back to the Arduino. So that part of it's actually rather simple. The hardest part is controlling the LCD in this complex of a graphic environment. So um, actually making that hardware is a little bit uh, complicated. So programming isn't too bad, uh, but the libraries that came from it do not work natively with this. And I found somebody who figured out what the differences were and actually put a library out there to do exactly that using basically anything you get from Adafruit should run with his library because he made a couple little changes inside of it to make it work with this particular shield. But what's running right here is the color graphics. So I'm right now, I just restarted it. So it's in red and you can see when I touch it, the, the dots. Now here's the thing. You see, it's not real fast at following my finger. I'm running on an Uno. I haven't tried the Mega, but the other examples that I saw were running on a Mega. So the Mega may have better processing for this type of and this type of thing. But if I want to pick a color, I come over here and I can pick blue, for example. And I can now draw blue, or I can come over here and pick green. Now I'm drawing green. So it's very simple, basically a plot uh, type of finger drawing. You can see where your fingers are, just like this. So I'm going to walk through this program a little bit. Um, I don't really know it very well because I didn't write it, but I kind of want to walk through it and kind of show you what they're doing. But the other thing is there's also a program that comes called Graphic Test. I'm going to upload it real quick. Let me make sure I have the right stuff selected here. Uh, let's see. I do not. I do now. So I'm going to upload this Graphic Test, which comes with the Adafruit library. So you'll be able to see some of the things that this um, display itself can do. Pull it down here. It's walked up a little bit. All right, so all it's going to do basically is just draw some lines. It's also some text there and things like that. So it's just going to go through these little pattern tests. And this comes actually with the Adafruit um, library as well. But I'm going to point you to the library where I got from this guy who seems like he's figured out all the little tricks to this particular board. And that was very helpful because I was really pulling my hair out for all this stuff. Um, but what we can do real quick here is, let me get this back up on my screen, is we can kind of walk through uh, the program. It's not real long, but uh, it's something that I don't know very well since I wasn't the one who actually created it. But let's go over here and we're gonna walk through. Uh, you can kind of see it's just doing little tests for graphics and things like that. So here's the code. 
and actually let me do this let me um change my size of my screen so it's bigger so you can see it better I meant to do that before there we go so at the very top there's some certain pins that are defined and it's actually pretty easily defined if, if you turn this board upside down it tells you uh what is where it's actually written on the, it's actually you know on the silk screen on the bottom of the board but there's an lcd cs cd wr and rd which would be uh here's write and read and then this is uh clear send and uh, i don't remember what cd was for but these go off the a pins a0 through a3 and then there's also an lcd reset off of a4 uh, the colors are defined right here as to what different colors they are. And then there's this TFT LCD.h. So it depend with the library and the link I'm going to put in the in the notes for this particular one, you need to make sure you're using TFT LCD.h because what here's I'm going to show you what what I was doing was if I went into the examples and down here is the TFT LCD library. This is what came from Adafruit, which works fine with the Adafruit touchscreen. But with this one, it does not. So this TFT LCD is the one that I downloaded from this other website. And it has the graphic test, which we're looking at right now. And then there's also the paint program, which is what I was doing in the very beginning. So but let's go ahead and walk through here. And you can see it's actually not overly difficult. So what we're going to do is uh, include the TFT LCD.h, not the LCD display. And then we're going to define the LCD. And we need to make sure we tell what pins are for the CS, CD, WR, and RD and the reset. So we've defined as above. So we just tell that what pins are there. And then in our setup, we're gonna open our C report just so we have some debugging code out. And then he does a reset and then he inits the, inits the display. And then he puts out text, which is red. So it's red and then cyan. So if we go up here, where does he define the red? Oh, maybe he doesn't define it anywhere. Oh, red, okay. So he test text, he puts it out in two colors, basically, red and cyan. So he puts it out in red, waits for two seconds, puts out the text text lines in cyan, which is the line that we were seeing there, waits for half a second, and then does the fast lines with red and blue. He draws rectangles. He does test fills. So you see he's just going through this this loop right here. And he's, he does the triangles and rectangles, etc. comes on down. So in the loop, all he does is he just does this text rotation, which here, let me show you what it's doing now. So you see it's doing text. He's just rotating the text around. So after he goes through all those different shapes, this is what he does. He just sits there and it goes around this loop. So that's the loop that we're looking at right here. Let's come back over and what we have after this loop so here's the loop you're doing all the different text rotation he basically is rotating it around and uh in four different things four different directions and then uh wait for a second between each and it does it all over again so here's where he's doing his um his functions so there's functions built into this library here's fill round rec here's fill screen draw round rec so all these different functions are built into this library already and as far as i can tell they're also built into the adafruit library so i don't think there's anything really new uh, from this particular library then here's the triangles i see he's just writing each each of his little test things right here fill screen he wants to fill the whole screen with with black so you can see draw a triangle you basically have the start and end of each of the different uh, sides of the triangle and the color that you want. So it's all—it's pretty basic to go through and be able to do this. I mean, it takes a little bit of thought about some little bit of a geometry to figure out some of this, but overall, it's not difficult. And then here you can see his uh, his text. Here's the test text, and you pass the color in. So he basically blacks the screen out first, puts the cursor to zero twenty, changes the text color, changes the size, and puts out the word "Hello World." Changes the size to two, prints out one, two, three, four, dot five, six. Then he sets the text size to three and then does this in hex right here. And then uh, here's test fill circles. So here you see fill circle. Basically, it's an X and a Y, a radius and a color. Very simple. Put the where you want the X and the Y, the center of the circle, and how big do you want the radius to be? And it does everything else for you. Here you see test draw circles again. He, these are these are filled circles. So basically it's solid. This is a 
non-filled circle, so it's just draw a circle. And here we go again with the rectangles. It does exactly the same thing. You basically need the um, X and Y of both of the sizes or corners and the colors. And you see those fills and draws right here. So this is the one you see the little lines going in. And then here he's just on the draws, which is a non-filled rectangle. Fast lines is horizontal and vertical lines. So that was like the thing we saw where I was drawing the lines and just going through a loop and he's changing um, the height to, where is it, Y? Right here, right here. So it's basically changing the starting position, I guess, oh, I should say. And then here's one going the other direction, changing the starting position for the X axis. And then his test lines, this is the, uh, fills the screen blank. He does the width and then the height. That's where he's doing his lines that way. He does it black again and goes the other direction with it right here. So that's pretty, oh, that's not it. Here's test bars. I don't remember seeing uh, test bars exactly, but he's doing uh, different color text bars. Let me reset it here and, and see if it does test bars. I don't remember it doing that. This isn't test bar design. I think this is where he's doing the squares or you know squares. Yeah, so I don't know which one was the test bar. I didn't really see test bars in there uh, anywhere. So, all right, and then see what else do we have? That's the bottom. All right, so that's the little program. It's only um, 210 lines long. It does all of that. Pretty pretty neat little thing to, to, to learn how to do. I'm not overly good with uh, geometry type stuff, but uh, it was pretty easy to figure out when I, was, when I was kind of looking through. I just don't know, like, since I didn't write it, I don't know, like, the back of my hands. So the other one we were looking at was this TFT paint. So let's kind of walk through it here. And again, you see it's defining um, the LCD information, the color definitions right here. Um, let's see. I'm not quite sure what the analog... Oh. Okay, so what he's doing is um, defining the pins for the input right there. Here you see he defines touchscreen, and here is XP, YP, XM, YM, and 300. So his description here says that we need another, we need another resistance between X plus and X minus. Uh, to read it for the one we're using it's 300 ohms across the X plate So right here you see you have the XM and XP and The XM I mean the YM and the YP so it looks like what he's doing is he's feeding in from uh, Pin six and seven the voltage so he brings the pins high probably we'll see that when we get down here I haven't really looked through this one very far and then he's reading the results back on uh, a1 and a2 so right here you see you actually you put in 300 ohms and you define the xp and yp in the xm and ym right here and it's important to note that we are using these these two pins the a1 and a2 at on the lcd as well so they are being used for multiple things that is an important thing to kind of remember i did see a note somewhere I think maybe on his website I mentioned that and that some of the uh, and some of the issues that it can cause. So here you define uh, box size and pen radius. So let's see. I'm going to guess that uh, box size is the size of the color boxes that are on there. And we're going to print to the serial port the word paint. We're going to do the same reset we did before. We're going to knit the display. We're going to make a black. 
and then here's he's basically doing uh the boxes on the side so let me go ahead, i'm gonna upload this real quick and we're gonna go back and we're gonna look at it so he does this whole fill rectangle thing so let's uh go over and look at this now so he's basically going across and he does red first and then he does yellow and then green then cyan, then blue, and magenta. And he has white in here, but he he's, he's, has it commented out. So you can see right here he's commented out um, the white. So he basically defines box size. And we saw, that, we saw that at the top. I believe it was 60, 40. Box size is 40. So he basically is doing a square box of 40. And you can see what he's doing is he is um, increasing its size. So if 40 is the box size, He's, in, he's doing 40 times 2, 40 times 3, so he knows what box it is right here. And then he does a draw rectangle of box size. Now, remember, it's a draw rectangle is an outside fill only, and he's doing it for the red one by default. So if we look at this, and I haven't touched it uh, yet, there's a little white box around the red. That's supposed to be like, indicate, I guess, what is currently active. I do not know if I touch something, like I just touched a green. I didn't see a white box move, but I actually have selected green. So we'll look through here and see if we can figure out why maybe he's not doing that. All right, so current color is equal to red when it first comes up, and then he sets pin mode 13 uh, to output. He defines his minimum and maximum pressure of 10 and 1,000. And then he comes through and here's this loop. So he writes to pin 13 high. And I'm not quite sure what's on pin 13. I don't think we defined pin 13 anywhere, have we? No, we haven't. So I'm not quite sure what we're using pin 13 for. We'll try to figure that out as we go through here. All right. So he digitally writes 13 high and then he does a get point and then takes it low p equals get point so i'm not quite sure what this is doing we we'll have to try to figure this out as we walk through so our pin mode uh and here's where you see that we're changing the mode to output for the xm and yp and pz if pz so apparently p the point uh the p class has a z value and if it's greater than min pressure and less than max pressure, so somehow he's getting the point at this point. So we'll have to walk through and see how he does that, maybe in the library. And so we set our minimum and maximum pressure of between, between 10 and 1,000. So if it's greater than 10 and less than 1,000, um, he's going to do this routine right here. So he's getting P dot Y, which is the minimum Y minus 5. So let's see. Oh, press the bottom of the screen to erase what that means. So if I, uh, let's go see if this actually does that. So I have things here. If I, I'm not sure which the, what is the bottom actually. I think it's over here. No, so let's try over here. No. I don't know what the bottom is. The bottom's up here. Don't know. So, and that doesn't, uh, TS min Y. So I'm going to guess that I have no clue what the bottom of the screen is. All right. So we'll go back to the code and we'll just walk past that one. <laughs> Let's see. Press the bottom of the screen to erase. He basically does box size, TFT width. He does black. Uh, okay, so he's uh, basically blocking the screen. And then, let's see, turn from 0 to 1 to the width. So he's basically doing the map command. We just covered the map command in a previous show where it takes two different ranges, or takes one range and just to equal the other range. So he's taking this uh, X and Y and converting it to something that's in this min-max range with a default of zero and it's based and he's converting it to the, he's using okay so 
this is the value right here. So PY and PX are the values. That's the XY values. He's taking the range that would be min Y to max Y and min X to max X. That's the range this P is in, but he's going to convert it to the range of whatever is zero to the height and width of the display. So the whole width, width of the display, height of the display, it's converting this min max value to fit into that range. So if PY is less than box size, uh, old color equals current color. Let's see, what's box size? Uh, box size is 40, okay. Which means you're, you're within that range, basically. So let's see. That means PX is the boxes. So PY has to be on the sides. Yeah, I still can't get to clear. Sorry, I got distracted. I was trying to figure out how to get to get to clear. Um, so he basically is now conf looking to see where you are. So um, no, that's, the Y has to be over here. No, I can draw right up to the edges. <laughs> so that can't be it. All right. I'll get back to the focus here. So what he's doing basically saying is, where is the PX located? So first of all, it looks as PY within the box size. So if you're 40 or less of the edge of the screen, you're going to be touching a color. Now he's trying to figure out what color you are touching. So he does that based on where the X is. So he knows you're in the Y range. Now he's going to look at it and saying, okay, what, where are you? in what color. So if you're in the first box, I know you're red. If you're in the second box, I know you're yellow. And he's going across here and he's comparing to see where you've touched at. And when he determines where you've touched at, he basically sets the current color equal to wherever you've touched. And then he looks like he's drawing a rectangle around where you've touched. Now, I can't see that happening uh, on the screen. But and I, the other thing I don't see is he's not covering up the old white one. So maybe that's why it's distracting uh, or that I don't see it happening is, of course, with there's a white box around the red and it's going to stay there. Um, what he probably should do is before he does it, this um, is figure out where the old color was, what the old color was, and fill it back in with the with the color. But we'll just keep one down through here. It still works well. All right. Oh, actually, here he's doing it. Never mind. <laughs> he's doing it right here. But I don't see that happening when I do it. So what the Maybe take a look at that. But right here he's saying if the old color is equal to red, then fill a rectangle around the red with red so the white white goes away. And um, for me looking at it, I don't see, I still see a white there. If we hit yellow, I don't see the white moving. That's purple now, right? That's purple. But the, it's still white around the red, and I don't see really a white. I don't see a white thing moving, so I'm not quite sure why that's not working, but uh, we'll continue on. All right, so now we come down, and there is this pen radius. So he's seeing the fill circle. That's where I'm touching. That's what he basically is doing is saying, if I'm not in these box areas, then if the pen radius is within the, the area, the height of the screen, then I'm going to fill this little circle with pen radius. So one of the things I could do with pen radius, which was up here, where do we see pen radius at? Pen radius is three. If I would make this like 10, for example, and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna upload this real quick, and we're gonna look and see what it does. All right, it's done uploading. So now we're in this draw mode. You can see how much bigger pen radius is now because it's 10 pixels in diameter so you can make that adjustment uh, just just like that all right so back over here and let's see go back down to where we were and so that's that's it that's actually the end of the code that's how simple the end of the code is so he's doing this fill circle at the x and the y and the width of the pen radius using the current color so there's not much more to it than that now, a few things in here didn't seem to be working quite or quite right, uh, but I don't think I really need to go through the process of debugging it. Uh, you can, if you want to download this code, and I I don't know where to tell you, you can get the shield at this point because, like I said, the manufacturer that's on the back of it, uh, which I'll put in the show notes in a link to it and everything, doesn't exist. So when I go there, my DNS comes back and says it doesn't exist. 
So uh, if I search the internet for the name, that's kind of how I finally figured out after going through pages of search results that somebody had figured out how to use this thing. Um, but I will say that Adafruit has a uh, touch screen sensor or touch screen shield that works very similar to this and it works very well. So I have one of those coming to make sure, but if somebody that has one and they said it works perfectly using the Adafruit libraries. So I probably should have in the long run, looking back, not have gone with the one that I did and stuck with an Adafruit one. But at the time, I don't remember even seeing that uh, Adafruit had one. So that's why I didn't do that. But uh, I can tell you that all the Adafruit stuff always works well. That's very well documented and very well put together. So if Adafruit has one, it'll work just fine. In fact, the libraries I got were from Adafruit originally because somebody said that they they do work and then they they weren't working quite right. So I started looking around a little bit more and I found this other person who had modified the Adafruit libraries to work with this because it is very similar, but not exactly. There's a couple of pin differences from what I understand that were messing up some things up. All right. So that is pretty much all I wanted to cover for this week. And uh, I got, I got some of my sensors. I have a big box of like 37 sensors. Uh, some of the sensors we've gone through in the past that I've gotten outside of this kit but I'm starting to play with some of those sensors and I'm going to start bringing some of them up uh, on the show. But if you have other show ideas, I'd love to hear uh, your ideas for a show. This particular one came from a viewer, the touchscreen. How do you do a touchscreen on an Arduino? I didn't really know the answer to it. So I was curious to figure it out. And after some research, I found this particular shield, ordered it, and then it didn't work. <laughs> so I never went much farther with it until I kept playing with it. I kept going back when I got some time and played a little bit more. And then um, the other day I did the same thing again. And I just happened to get lucky and find somebody that uh, had converted the Adafruit library into it. And it looked just like this one. I think his might even been the exact same as, was I, as mine was, but looked different than the Adafruit one. So it's, uh, it's just a, one of those things where you get somebody who made a shield and either uh, started producing it and went out of business or figured there was any money in it. I don't know exactly what happened to it. Uh, but also I'll put a link to the Adafruit one in the show notes as well. It will. Uh, it works well from what I understand from people that, that use it. And the only thing I've noticed is the the Uno is very slow. You saw me move my finger and I had to go very slow. I am going to try the Mega because I've seen examples of it on on a Mega. So I'm thinking they did that because Mega was much faster than what the Uno is, which it is faster, but is it fast enough to be able to handle the touch interface? I don't know the answer to that. So that's something I'm going to experiment with a little bit, and I may try to do that before the show's up uh, on tomorrow or Wednesday. And just give you a result because I can just grab a mega real quick and, and upload it. And I'll know within a couple seconds if it's, if it's better or it's not better. So I'll make sure I put that in the show notes as well. All right. That's pretty much it for this week. As I mentioned before, spread the love. Tell people about us. Um, ideas for future shows. You know, Give us an email. You can send it to let's make it at tech-send.tv. Any questions about the show, send it there as well. You also can go out to our community at Google+. Plus. If you go to techzen.tv and click on the community link, it's the shortcut to get there. And that's also a quick way to get some answers. We do monitor that and we get emails and people post in it and that is starting to grow. And we like to keep that growing and make it from somebody else as well. Not just from us. That's part of the whole idea of the community is you get to interact with other people that are into the same thing that you are as well. And all other shows are out there too. And if you've gone to techzen.tv and looked at our other shows and we have a ton of other shows, we have a, a few new ones that we're trying to get on the network right now um, that actually we don't do, but we're going to start maybe, uh, helping distribute some of those technology-based games and things like that. So that's all coming up in the future here as well. Plus, we, if you go to looks.tv, it's our non-tech network. However, all the techs and TV shows are on there, uh, at least for the time being, and they'll probably remain on there. But we're, we're adding in other non-tech type shows, sports shows, things like that on that network. And if you have Roku, you can get an app for both techs and TV and looks.tv uh, and on the Roku and watch it on the big screen. How can you get any better than that? Have everything blown up in big, ugly pictures. <laughs> so, all right, that's it for this week. We'll see everybody next week. For show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the techzen.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the techzen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show.
You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.